my goodness. We have unlocked the secrets of life. Oh yeah, welcome all back to the channel, Fishing Freaks. I just got back from the International Fishing Show in Orlando, known as ICAST, where the whole world brings all their new fishing products that you can uh, check out and see what is, uh, what's the new dangle? You know, what's the new technology? What's the new bait? What's the new boat? All that fun stuff. So uh, that was a fun show and I actually got to meet uh, some fishing freaks while I walked around on the floor for a little bit. And every time I'm interacting with you guys out on the water or at a show or something like that, uh, I always like to ask what's your kind of, what's your favorite video that I do? You know, what's something that you learn from? You know, just, just stuff you, you get uh, more information than just comments out of a YouTube video. And two of the top things that I hear, more crappie videos, please and do more videos with LFD. We love seeing LFD, which is my dad. So we're gonna get both in today's video, y'all. And today's premise, we're going after redneck lobsters. What sparked this video is I got on this app called TikTok about eight months ago or so. I thought it was just a bunch of mindless, uh, degrading entertainment for a little while. And then I came across some useful outdoor videos. There's some, there's some really good outdoor creators out there now. I came across a video about poor man's lobsters. And this feller was making walleye into these sweet little succulent treats that he said tasted like lobsters. I cook fish a lot of different ways. I have never tried it like this. So I thought to myself, well, what if we go out and we get the most, the second best freshwater tasting fish known to man, the crappie, and we do it the same way. And today's video will be brought to you by, since they're still available on googlesquad.com, the, the exclusive boxes, the bundles, we got a bunch of them, and they're on sale actually. Get yourself a, get yourself a tumbler. Put your juices in it. Redneck lobster time, y'all. Before we do that though, uh, I just spotted LFD's truck. I can't tell you how many times this has happened. Just directly. Hey man, where you at? Man, that is a nice looking boat right there. That looks just like my old boat. Well, I'm on a I'm on a uh, redneck lobster mission today, catching crappies. I got me a series of brush piles I'm gonna be going after. I didn't know if you wanted to join or if you're almost done or what. Um, I, unless you're slamming them right now. You got one dink? <laughs> it's your first spot. Uh, and then, uh, then I'll load my boat and everything and come back. Okay, that sounds good. Last video you guys said you liked the side commentary, me breaking down things a little more, so I'm gonna continue to do that. Thank you for your feedback. So this is the time of year where fish like to move offshore, and this year I've seen a lot of bass not move out as much, but the crappie definitely go out there and they stack up on uh, anything from rock piles, brush piles, uh, sometimes they'll get on open water, they'll get on ledges, uh, standing timber, anything that they can huddle around. And I'm targeting piles of brush. This is not anything that I put out, this is just brush, trees, uh, some people put little PVC pipes, and they'll just throw them out in the lake in certain areas they think fish are going to congregate. And the areas that you want to look for are points that's the easiest thing to do so go out to the main lake points and just start looking around you know if you've got uh doesn't, doesn't matter if you don't have to have side imaging down scan all that stuff you just have a simple depth finder you can usually find these little variations on the points and you know throw a marker buoy out drop down see if you can catch fish on it good depth to look for is about 20 foot this time of year in the dog days of summer That'll vary a little bit as the lake goes up and down and, and the depth of the cover changes, but usually I start looking around that 20 foot mark this time of year. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm letting the jig kind of swing out in front of me and I'm working it over the pile. Sometimes they, they don't like that swinging action. Sometimes they do, just experimenting to see. There's one coming up to it, should eat it. That is amazing, that fish did not clap that thing. Circling back, it's like, it's a little spooky. 
There he is. Go. Oh, God. Finally got one to react to it. Didn't inhale. Or he inhaled, but it was gone quick. Get right back on top of him. There he is coming. Got him. All right. There we go. Oh, that might be a big one. That is a white bass. Okay, interesting. Interesting how that took effect. Hi there. How you doing? I love your boat. So, what's your name, young man? Emmett. Emmett. It's nice to meet you. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, I just caught a white bass. See you, Emmett. Have a good one. There should be one knocking the socks off of my jig right now. Come eat that thing. Is he going to do it? Got him. Oh, that was a crappie nibble there. Golly. You were hard to catch. And you're not even big. Had to straight up Gibby to dangle. There are some fish on it. I don't know exactly what size. But we're about to find out. <clears throat> See what kind of lobsters we're dealing with. Golly, they are just ultra finicky. Come on, eat it. Golly, that took a minute. There's a keeper though. That's our lobster baby. Just a little guy, a little fresh nugget. Be filleted. Gonna check him, make sure. Ten and a half inches. Half inch into the keeper zone. Uh, and since you're so finicky, I'm definitely keeping you. You just gotta be eating, dude. Oh no, this is not good. The hill. I got a red light on. Oh God, I just got hit. I don't know what this, I can't turn. There's no turning. Something is like disconnected. Oh, what is going on here? I'm gonna try power down, powering up. Okay, we might have, okay. We're back online. Just needed a restart. Love the Garmin graph, but trolling motor needs a little, a little work. Get them, man. On the hottest day of the year. The highest requested videos that I've heard, comments and in person. What is that? Videos with LFD. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're an international <laughs> superstar, man. Yeah, everybody wants to laugh. <laughs> I think they just they just like that we're still out here getting after it. Yeah, probably so. Probably so. So no luck this morning? Just dinkers. I did. I did see bass schooling. I just hooked one just now. Yeah. And uh, but they're they're small. You know, no big ones. It's time for an LFD plug. Hey, these money bags are awesome. They're Tell them where to go. They really are. Go to googansquad.com. <laughs> Use code LFG for ten off. <laughs>
Thank you, Dad. For that clock. Just a whole, whole herd of them. So. Well, y'all, technical issues, what are you gonna do? I, and I always say this, but I, I don't care what kind of boat you have, how new it is, whatever, there's always going to be issues. And I fished all day in the rain uh, with my dad a few weeks ago, and uh, I, there were some electrical issues uh, that, that happened. So that's just the way it goes, y'all. But uh, the good news is, got a crappie, fresh crappie to test. We got a fresh white bass, and I've also got a, a sack of old crappie from a year ago, so last season's catch, and I want to see how this recipe is going to vary with all three of these. So if it can make old crappie, old fish taste good, we might be striking gold. Wouldn't be much of a catch, clean, and cook if I didn't clean the fish, so I've only got two here today. So standard fillet knife uh, versus the reciprocating oscillating, whatever you want to call it, electric fillet knife. Uh, I cut around the rib cage. So instead of cutting all the way through with that sawing motion, I just go around it. it. Takes a little practice to figure it out, but on these little ones, and if you don't have many, it's honestly, uh, I enjoy it. It's, it's not that, that much work, so. That fillet on this white bass looks really good. Looks really clean, so. We're gonna get some variety here and see if we can make some lobster taste out of these freshwater fish. other fish should be thawed out now so let's get upstairs and let's go cook the recipe we're using to make these redneck lobsters y'all has to be the easiest recipe I've ever done on this channel so easy to do you just take yourself a pot of boiling water you pour about a cup of sugar in it and you just let them boil you know same thing I tell you guys in the, uh, when you're using oil frying fish when they float up they're done uh, same concept applies here and you just go dab it in that butter and that's it that's it, no, no pepper, no salt. This is literally it. So we're getting ready to drop them in. Just want you to look at the difference in the meat. The crappie is just a fantastic looking piece of meat. It's almost translucent, especially these little ones. White bass is small too, but you get that little thin red strip that kind of gives you a gamey taste to it. It's just not like that with the crappie. Our water is almost to that boiling point. When it hits it, I'm gonna throw in the sugar and then I'm gonna turn it down a little bit and just work it like I would oil with fish, you know, probably around 350 or so. And same concept is gonna apply in oil or in water when your fish come up, when they start to float, uh, that's when you can tell that they're done. And what's gonna be nice about having clear water to look through here, this boiling water, and we'll be able to see the fish turning that white, uh, that nice white color as well. That's another indicator that it's gonna be done. Uh, so it shouldn't take very long, just a few minutes. We'll pull them out, and then we're just gonna dip them in the butter, straight up, just like a lobster. Getting to that boiling point. So now we're gonna add about a cup of sugar. This is exactly a cup. cup of sugar to half a pot, half a big pot, some kind of math like that. All that sugar is dissolved. That only took just like 10, 20 seconds. So now we're gonna add our fish. And the first fish that we're gonna add is the white bass. I'm curious to see what the white bass is like. Then we're gonna add the fresh crappie, and then we're going to add the crappie that I caught last season that's been frozen. And we'll compare all three. White bass fillet going in. Oh, we curled it. Just 
curl it straight away. Next one. Curl it just like a lobster tail, y'all. I'm seeing how they got the name. Just for fun, I always like to set timers on things when I'm cooking. We're gonna go five minutes. See where that leaves us. And those lobsters start to yip, 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 work their way up to the top. We're gonna scoop them out with our fancy dancy William Sonoma scooper tool that Steph probably does not want me coming anywhere close to a fish with, but she's not here, so. <laughs> Kitchen is mine, honey. Five minute mark, and they're starting to do the dance. This is almost as exciting as pulling them out of that brush pile. You're like, mmm, mmm. Caught them this morning, gonna eat them this evening. Actually, I gotta give credit to LFD on the white bass. You know, we actually started stroking a few uh, after the trolling motor broke. And I thought it'd be an interesting twist to add the white bass in the mix. So, all right, we got a, we got a bobber here. It even has that fishy seafood smell. Oh, look at the colors. My goodness. Scoop our other buddy out here. What's crazy is just smelling it, it smells like a lobster. I'm not kidding you. I don't want to break a piece off. So y'all can see this up close. You know what, let's get the camera over here. It's kind of cool how it just stays in beautiful, beautiful form. We're just gonna take our piece Drop it in the butter. Oh. Oh, hang on. What in the world? What in the daggum world? This is white bass. This is witchcraft. Oh my goodness. We have unlocked the secrets of life. Holy moly. Y'all aren't even gonna believe me how good this is. I'm gonna eat this other one real quick. It's that good. Y'all will not even believe how good this is. You get the sweetness from the sugar into that meat that a lobster naturally has. I don't get any gaminess off this fish. That butter brings it all together. Oh my word. By far, this is the, the most shocked I have ever been on a cooking anything on, on this channel. Uh, maybe even all the Guggen Squad videos too. If you would have told, blindfolded me, and given me that, I would have said, that's a good lobster. Texture was amazing. Now we gotta throw in the crappie. Let's get them in there. I cannot wait to see what this tastes like. Wow, I am blowing away right now. That is so good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to crack adult beverage right now and just celebrate. I feel like I've discovered gravity. I can honestly say if this crappie is as good as I think it's going to be, TikTok is a useful app in this world. So I'm gonna say for a small fish, like a 10 to 12 inch fish, you're looking at about five to uh, seven minutes maybe um, on a bigger piece of fish, like a thicker, you know, 14 incher, um, white bass, crappie, something like that. It's probably gonna be something around eight, nine, nine minutes, maybe longer if it's one of them girthy fat backs. Yeah, that one looks done. He's, he's coming off the bottom. He's staying off the bottom. He's suspended. He's in open water. He's ready to be taken out. I'm about to live spoon him. I love how intact the meat is too. Now compared to frying, you can get violent sometimes in there. It's like they're fighting each other. Crappie test time. Got a nice warm butter. Just kept on the stove. Crappie is just flaky, falling apart. Oh, it's still kind of hot, it's burning my fingers, but I can't wait. Oh, it's sweet. The texture's unreal. Add the butter. You would not.
not believe the texture. It's actually mushy. This is one of these crappie that would be the perfect size, just whole fried, whole filet fried. The, the tenderness of it is amazing. I would honestly prefer it to be a little more firm, but the flavor. Mmm, 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 mmm. I cannot believe the texture of this. All right, now for the final test. We're gonna try one year old crappie fillets. So these are ones that I've frozen. They were good size ones, so it's probably gonna take a little longer. Usually I have, I have a hard time getting frozen crappies to you know, really be as good as I wish they would be. It's like a texture deal after fish has been frozen. It, it changes the composition of the meat. It's not as flaky, I feel like. So um, I'm interested to see if this will kind of keep some of the, uh, the texture of the original fish. That last crappie was almost too mushy. Floaters. I'm gonna need a bigger boat for these, Captain. The kitchen, in case you're wondering, smells fishy. Definitely smells like fish. Okay, my worry here is these are gonna be a little too, uh, like, broken down. Oh! Dad, gum it. Tried to get that close up shot for you guys. Ended up dropping my delicious lobster on the floor. Son of a gun. We'll give that to the chickens, don't worry. Okay, for real this time. Previously frozen crappie, boiled eight minutes in the sugar water, butter. That is lobster like, right there. A little bit bigger one, like probably a 12 incher. Bigger chunks of meat in it. There's a little bit of a taste difference between the fresh and the frozen. But that, <clears throat> that is fantastic. We gotta try another piece, just to confirm. Another just solid looking unit right there. Look at that guy. Color on it is bright white like a lobster too. Oh baby. That piece is even better. Cooked it a little longer purposefully on this try and I got that texture right where I want it. A little more firm. I'm just beside myself on how excellent that is. We turned previously frozen fish into delicious redneck lobster, y'all. I'm gonna have the rest over rice, a little butter on the side. Shoo! Fishing freaks, the results of this were pretty extraordinary. I promise you, if you try this, uh, at home you will not be disappointed this is fantastic for old fish you've got in your freezer lock bags and stuff like that Woo! bon appetit but i will say i think it shines on a little bit chunkier firmer meat the crappie especially a fresh little crappie that meat is so dainty so delicate uh, i think i prefer it baked or fried over the boil just because it, it's just falling apart and it's it's almost like too mushy. It's a weird texture thing, but where this shines, this this blows me away. The white bass, the white bass was the best one, and I think it's because of the way the meat breaks down. Uh, it's a bigger chunk, firmer meat, and I think that's why the walleye is probably fantastic. For this but if you take like a, a smaller striper or something like that that's got good chunks it's gonna be just like a lobster uh, the way it cooks up it's it's so so good by far best white bass I've ever had even with that little red strip in it uh, just I mean such simple ingredients you're still tasting the fish you get that sweetness that, that a lobster does oh man I just got a thing TikTok for possibly changing my life with uh, poor man's lobster. Discovered it. I'm gonna call them redneck lobsters. Now you got another recipe for your arsenal, y'all. So get out there and catch them and go cook them up. I'm, I'm curious to see what a catfish might taste like, maybe some other species. Thank you guys, as always, for being here. And I guess I'll be seeing you a little more on TikTok now. So tight lines, go ahead and sniff your fish all summer long. I will see you on the next one, God bless. I took a big spoon and I tried to get under the white bass and dangle 
for a big bass. Uh, I'm experimenting with that. I think that's a good experiment. Yeah. So far, I caught two big catfish. Did you keep them? No. 